She may not want to answer. I'm not saying she's obliged to answer it, but she seemed offended by the question. When it comes to issues she wants to weigh in on, like the, the Bosnia uh, controversy, uh, Chelsea does choose to at least say something. Well, and she was only being used as a bulletproof uh, shield then. Uh, so that's entirely different. <laughs> You're right. I think it's important, Dan, to say in, in no way, no matter what you think, is Chelsea Clinton being pimped out in any way. I think that's important to say at this right. juncture. Let's, um, let's but not, I, but I know what you're saying. i got to wrap this up, but before we get another call about the term that Stephanie used, it's unacceptable. We agree that. We all agree on that. Stephanie, I'm sorry to single you out. You know, we've had, this has been an issue here. We don't need another issue. Dan, I've always been unacceptable. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. I, understand. I was I understand. just making a point. I know you were. The pictures I, weren't that bad, that, but they were salacious enough for Bill O'Reilly's nightly B-roll of boobs. So he can go, look at how awful <laughs> that is. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's awful. Look again. All right. The couple keeping it classy and appearing on the court show to dissolve their marriage. It's uh, classy with a K, Dan. You're right. And by the way, one of the things apparently he threw at his wife was a printer. But I'm guessing at his size, maybe like one of those little Canon mini printers or maybe like a little photo printer or something. But still, that would sting. And all I've heard is white men telling Hillary Clinton that it's over, that she needs to get out of the race. And I'm tired of it. I have not heard one woman say that. Carol, I have ovaries. Um, <laughs> and I have to, I have to agree with Ed here. I, I think this clearly was playing the race card. And I gotta tell you, I am someone that understands this, Carol. I'm friends with many Hillary supporters and I understand when a dream dies. I had a late night show opposite Leno and Letterman in 95. I thought I was gonna be the, the woman that succeeded in late night. That dream died. I thought I'd be married by now, Carol. That that dream has died. So I understand how painful it is when a dream dies. It is Carol. not dead, Stephanie. Carol, we are getting into Sunset Boulevard time. It is, it's not the presidency. I'm still big. It's the okay, presidency that got one small. woman, one woman wants her to stop that I've heard. All right, let me, let me get Lanny Davis in. Lanny, is it over? I have an announcement to make that I do not have ovaries, first of all. <laughs> I feel like Hillary's GPS has malfunctioned. You know how your GPS is recalculating route. The, the road to the White House goes through Pennsylvania goes through Ohio, and now apparently it goes through Puerto Rico, recalculating route. None of the states that Barack Obama has won matters for some reason. On the town hall idea, Stephanie. Oh, Larry, I cannot wait. I We need you to see, to oh yes, Barack Obama and John McCain side by side so we can see the white hot electricity that is John McCain. <laughs> you see, this is the era we're in, we, or, or, that we're in, Larry, that you have to have a website to refute things you that aren't true. Repeats untruths? You know, it's like I did not have sex with Bigfoot while my wife was calling someone whitey. What? <laughs> Larry, it's like his solution is this ridiculous gas tax holiday, which every top economist has come out against. It's going to save you four cents over the summer. It's going to cost jobs. Do you think he'll get this offshore drilling ban? And the oil companies ban? are just going to make more money. Do you think he'll get the ban removed? Uh, I, I don't know. But I think, you know, all Americans can agree with Larry that it's the poor oil companies that really have suffered the most in this economy. And I think well, we all feel for them. I could, weep, the, I could weep out loud right now. Well, you know, Tom, I've said through this whole election, I think this has really been more a generational thing than about a race or gender even. Because I think if you look at, you know, to me, it's a lot of the older women, older feminists that are saying, oh, well, this will never happen again in my lifetime. And I just don't believe that. Obama offers a comprehensive energy but, plan, uh, you know, Dan, and their response is here. There's air gauges because his only plan is to blow up your tires. Uh, it's well, fifth grade. You know, when he says Washington's broken, John McCain knows it. Well, you've been there 26 years. <laughs> it reminds me of how when Bush ran in 2004, he's like, this place is a wreck. Who's been running this place? We got to fix this. I'm not saying that that smacks of desperation when the candidate gets to the point of who wants to see my wife naked? Barack Obama has a serious field position advantage in this game. Stephanie, final thought? Yep. Dan, Dan, you know what? Like every media story about Barack Obama has exploded. He can't win women. He's leading in women. He can't win white working class people. He's winning that by 10 points on McCain. He can't win Latinos. He's winning. I think these guys are right. I, you'll play this clip back. There's going to be a landslide for Obama, Dan. That's all I'm saying. It's going to be a whole new map. There's going to be young people. There's going to be states that Republicans have never won. You'll Stephanie, play this clip back. We'll, we'll take Stephanie, that to we, the bank. We, we, Stephanie, we play back clips of you anyway. If you look at the important thing, the electoral map, Larry, if you look at the latest ones, I don't know that it's going to be close. I still think we could really be talking about a, a landslide for Obama. All I can say as a comedian, Dan, the Obama ad funny, the McCain ad not funny. Who is his campaign manager, Pee Wee Herman? I know you are, but what am I? That's what McCain has been reduced to. As the woman on the show tonight, yeah. I can stipulate that Barack Obama is hot. Yeah. However, <laughs> that is not. Right. 
a fair ad. Well, I honor what, what, what Senator Clinton has achieved, but why do we need to put her in nomination? Larry, I had an alternate idea. She could come in on roller skates like in Xanadu, maybe have male dancers, maybe a Bob Mackie headdress, <laughs> anything she wants. Maybe fly in on like Sandy Duncan, anything she wants. But to put her name in nomination, why is that necessary? Do you think like a coup is going to occur? you think there's going to be a stampede? Maybe there, there's going to be a Trojan horse coup, Larry. If it is, is indeed Sarah Palin, is there a possibility that she would siphon off Hillary Clinton voters that still haven't come to grips with Barack Obama being the nominee? This is just so uh, transparent, may I just say. Women well, are smarter than that, Karen, you know that. Larry, I don't mean to be rude, but you know I'm a comedian, and I sort of had the feeling this is like a Saturday Night Live sketch from the beginning. A, Governor Palin looks exactly like Tina Fey. Uh, she was an ex, I don't know, Miss Alaska. She was the mayor of Wasilla. She's under investigation, and the party that lectures everybody else about family values, about moral values, now has a she has a, a teenage pregnant daughter. I, I mean, it, it, it honestly, I, I couldn't believe it when I first heard this story. She's criticizing Barack Obama's experience. This is someone that was a mayor of a town of 9,000 that she left in debt. And she's touting herself as somebody that's qualified to judge Barack Obama's experience. I'm so scared of that clip. I would like you to hold me, Larry. I hope you don't mind. I'm I am scared. terrified. <laughs> At, like Paul Magala said, by the way, I saw the ocean on the way here in L.A., so I would like to be Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try it something here. He's, McCain's saying change is like me saying a word that has no application to me, like, say, Clooney. Clooney, 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 Clooney. Am I getting any better looking, Steph? Clooney, Clooney, Clooney. <laughs> yes, it's preposterous. It's, it's silly. I'm hypnotized. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, Paul. I think you're a very good looking man. Clooney, Clooney, Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have... I never heard you can't so keep your hands off in these minds. <laughs> you don't have to take on your, your own party when they're right on everything. John McCain's <laughs> had to take on his party because they're wrong, and now he's flip-flopped on any, everything he ever took his party on on. Thank you, group. There's some Clooney, Clooney, Clooney. <laughs> You're a good-looking man, Paul. Clooney, Clooney, Clooney. Paul Pagala, I love you. <laughs> if the Charlie Gibson interview was the Titanic, the Katie Couric one was kind of the Hindenburg. No wonder they're trying to get the vice presidential debate canceled. <laughs> Did, well, you, uh, did now, you see that move? If, if John McCain hadn't showed up for the debate, he's like, oh, but we could have it when the vice presidential one is supposed to be. <laughs> this bill passed today. Oh, uh, well, golly, you betcha, Larry. I'm going to just wink at you and bluff my way through this answer like Sarah Palin. <laughs> First, he, he says the fundamentals of the economy are strong. Then he wants to fire the head of the SEC, which doesn't even have the power to do. You know, I mean, he really has just been incoherent. And then he takes credit for the bailout plan that failed. And, and, I, and I think it's not a surprise Barack Obama's come out ahead on this. The plumber here. is a John McCain voter who makes $40,000 a year who can't afford to buy the business that doesn't even make $250,000 okay, a year. Back. And he benefit Nancy, under Barack Obama. Right time. Let me just say, I feel so underdressed. I only spent $140,000 on this outfit tonight, and I couldn't <laughs> be more embarrassed. I really couldn't. Can I just speak for women everywhere in America, Larry, sure. when I say she is completely unqualified to be vice president, but I so want that red leather jacket. That is hot. <laughs> All I can say, Larry, is when I was leaving the Republican convention in Minneapolis, the um, uh, Victor the Victory elephant that they were trying to sell, it was in the half price bin at the Minneapolis airport. <laughs> and I know that I've been selling Larry the Landslide Lizard t-shirts like crazy on stephaniemiller.com. So, oh, Larry, to be a fly on the wall in these My Fair Lady sessions where they're putting the book on her head and going, no, that's not what a vice well, president does. does. No, she, that's not the Bush doctrine. Does she have a point? You know what? Anyone that allows themselves to be dressed in $150,000 worth of clothes to go out on the campaign trail and call Barack Obama an elitist is not very bright. When you watch the Katie Couric and the Charles Gibson interviews, it, it, there, there is no amount of schooling that can fix that. She is The American people have judged her to be completely unqualified for this role. <laughs> to officially announce the death of comedy with <laughs> President-elect Obama. Stephanie, how do you plead to this uh, very serious charge of uh, going easy on the President-elect for racial reasons? Howard, I think you listen to my radio show and you know we don't go easy on anybody. So I, I think, <laughs> can we make fun of Barack Obama? Yes, we can. I think yes, we can is still operative. Well said. But is it harder to be funny when you're talking about how, what a great job the President is doing? No, no, no. I can find a fart joke in anything. You know that, Howard. <laughs> right. Let me yeah. paraphrase something that John McCain said. I would rather lose the comedy war and win an election at this point as a liberal. Here, here. I want to play for you a little bit of tape. Uh, Stephanie Millett, I'm sure you've seen uh, Saturday Night Live making fun of somebody from your side of the aisle. You must at once resign as president of this co-op. Indeed, sir, justice and decency demand you so to do. <laughs> Now, was that an accurate portrayal of your crazy friend, Keith Oldman? 
If I didn't want to marry him, that would be so much funnier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think uh, Keith played it on his show, and I think he has a good sense of humor about it. And, uh, to, you know, for a liberal woman, the madder he gets, the hotter I get for him. I think you know that, Howard. <laughs>